Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the Serie A review for the past weekend, weekend of the 9th and 10th, 11th of January. Um, wearing Milan because uh, headline number one is this was the perfect round for, uh, if you're a Milan fan, almost perfect. Uh, I think also if you're a Juve fan you will not be unhappy about how things went this round and it all comes down to one result is that Roma and Inter draw. Second headline, it's pretty uh, clear, Roma into draw um, in what we'll see was an uh, interesting game uh, into staying winless for two consecutive uh, rounds. Uh, other uh, news is that, uh, you know, Napoli wins late, Lazio gets a win at Parma and uh, we have some big movement on the bottom of the table as well with Genoa recording another win. So uh, let's run through the games uh, a little bit. I mean, started out with Benevento against Atalanta, which uh, for a second there you might have thought that Benevento could get something, but it was all At Atalanta with Ilicic getting the first goal. Then, as I said, so uh, gets in the 50th the e, the e equalizer, but then uh, within the so in the 69th and Zapata uh, turn, turning around and Luis Muriel with a wonderful goal uh, makes it 4-1 for Atalanta. Then the big result uh, in on the bottom of the table, Genoa beating Bologna, um, where Zajic uh, gives Genoa the uh, lead just before the halftime. And then Mattia Destro, uh, I was a bad mistake, but I think it was Scholten, uh, who is keeping up the ball close, close to the box, a a boy, um, uh, gets it him, from, from him and Destro can put it in net 2-0. And uh, that seals the game for Genoa. Uh, Gen Genoa. 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 <laughs> I'm getting so. In German, it's Genoa. Uh, and for that reason, I'm always messed up with Genoa. And uh, so, yeah, uh, they get an important, important win for them. Of course, I watched Milan play Torino. Uh, and what can I say? It was ex the game. Almost, except for injuries, again, went pretty much exactly how I won one minute ago. They started out, you know, bounced back from the from the Juve game. Uh, Star started out on the on the front foot, really trying to get the goal. They get the goal in the 25th with a wonderful move that comes from Hernandez, who plays it to Diaz with a nice touch into Leo's path, who can make it 1-0. Very well played goal. And then uh, f uh, in the 10 minutes later, uh, Brahim Diaz is brought down in the box and yeah, the ref uh, initially didn't give, give, give it and I have, have to say when I saw the replays at first, it was really, 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 really tight uh, in many uh, ways. I could have seen that uh, below this touch, yes, he placed the ball, but uh, you can then see that he first placed a man to get to the ball. All right, yeah, pen penalty. I mean, I'm not complaining for sure. Uh, <laughs> or, or that one in case he makes it 2-0 and that uh, eased my nerves right there. I have uh, Ricardo Rodriguez, a uh, former Milan player. And this was the uh, thing. I mean, Torino has, uh, has with Rodriguez and then the uh, uh, Trancha Polo too. Uh, a coach and a player who were with Milan, then also Verdi was uh, with Milan. So, you know, as we saw with Sampdoria trying to beat, uh, uh, beating Inter, if you play against your former team, you're probably quite motivated. Uh, and that always had, had me a little bit worried. But no, it was an, it was 2 0 at, at, at that with a little scare. After the scare, um, after the half, uh, there was another scare because uh, in the 50th, uh, Verdi runs into, into the box, uh, Tonali is ne ne next to him, and both of them fall down. And a penalty is given. And it seems like all right at first, but when you see the replay, you see really that Verdi tries to shoot and in this movement hits Tonali, who has to come off. Uh, that really, really, really had me worried. That really, really had me worried. Uh, seemingly, he. Might not play uh, May eight week, but it's not. It's nothing that serious. Serious, but still, uh, that did not look good. Uh, the way he went off, um, that the referee then looked at VAR and turned around. I think was also the right decision in this case, of course. And now uh, this, this is something I read yesterday and bugs me. Gazzetta dello Sport, a Milan newspaper, uh, is saying Milan won thanks to VAR. Honestly. 
that is ridiculous. And then you uh, get, get to know that the Torino owner also has a stake in Gazzetta. <laughs> Can't. I'm sorry, I think I give you the penalty. That was a close call, but I think when you look at it very closely, it is a pen. Uh, and the second one is not a pen. It's as, e as easy as that. Milan then played home rather safely. Uh, yes, being very passive, but uh, whatever Torino brought, they could defend it well. And even uh, Cialanoglu came, uh, comes back uh, to having a little strain, and more importantly, uh, Ibrahimovic also gets a few minutes, uh, tried to even get, get, get a goal, but was not to be. We're talking, we have to talk Roma Inter. That was the big game. I didn't watch it live, but I watched it. Uh, basically, after it ended, I came back and I pulled it on. Uh, and it, uh, everything else was not of importance at that point. And uh, right off the get-go, Lukaku had a very close-range header. A great save by Paul Lopez. Um, but then uh, Roma scores in the 70 through Pellegrini. But it's not Pellegrini. Uh, the, the, it was all about Veretu getting the ball from... Um, Barella in his own half, running forward, the ball comes to Mkhitaryan, who plays uh, across to me uh, to Pellegrini, who then take, takes a shot that is deflecting and goes into the net. Uh, luck, lucky goal, but you know, from that moment on, Roma actually had a good grip on the game, not having many crazy many chances, but having a good, good grip and working well and being uh, the better team for the uh, remainder of the half, uh, despite I think there, there were some uh, odd uh, half chances for Inter, but I have to say it was uh, Roma had that game under control. Um, also, we have to, of course, talk the big fight between uh, the big fights between Lukaku and Smalling, former United teammates. Uh, that was uh, interesting. Let's put it that they, that they, that they didn't really. Um, Hold back and actually that's this is what you want to see. Good defender against good attacker going all out. After the half though, for some reason, Roma was very, very passive. Uh, I don't want to say they wanted to defend it, but Inter really came, came a storming. And I have to say for the large majority of the um, second half, Inter was by far the better team and the goals were coming. Uh, I mean, it should have been when Lukaku said, uh, Lautaro Martinez, there should have been uh, the goal right, right there. Then I think that, that was uh, later on another save on Lukaku. But uh, the goal came, uh, the equalizer came through Skrinja in the 56th when uh, Brozovic corner was headed in against Skrinja. Uh, getting the goal there and then a uh, wonderful move I mean uh, Hakimi had also a chance before but then a wonderful um, a move uh, where then Hakimi runs on the edge of the box and places the uh, ball wonderfully into the corner uh, make it 2-1 for Inter and it really seemed like this will be it um, just Arturo Vidal who I thought was the weak point for Inter all day long um, I mean, having a better performance than a few days ago, but uh, it did not look uh, good. And then when he missed this chance, I mean, he was clear, had a clear uh, path on target and hits over, over, over the ball. That could have sealed the game for Inter. And that brought Roma back in uh, with Jacob first having a little bit of personal duel with Handanovic. Uh, Mancini also getting a chance. This was all in the last 15 and so minutes. And then uh, after a corner, VR finds Mancini, who in the 85th makes it 2-2. Roma then even pushing a little bit for the win, but I think the 2-2 on the balance is the fair result. And it was also the result that, honestly, yes, Roma is my second favorite team, and I typically want to win. I would not have been unhappy if they would have won. But if I just look from a million perspective, that was the perfect result. Uh, both of them dropping points. Um, Parma with new coach, old coach, Daversa. I never understood why Daversa uh, was sacked or went. Maybe he resigned. I don't know. I don't have the insight in info. I didn't understand because he did an outstanding job at Parma. Um, he maybe at the beginning Parma Palm was th threatening, but in the second half it was all Lazio who had many chances, missed a few. Luis Alberto and Casado uh, scoring, but it could have been a lot more. Um, Udine gave Napoli some trouble. Um, I mean, first is a, a penalty through Insigne that gives Napoli the lead and another one that was uh, first look at the VAR. Then uh, another defensive uh, misstep 
uh, is uh, used by lasagna to score the equalizer. And then, despite Napoli having loads of possession and loads of uh, the ball and trying to push forward, cannot create chances and twice hit on the car counter -like, where Lasagna probably missed uh, to make his second goal. And then deep in the server chef Bakayoko heads it in the internet, give Napoli a much, much needed win. Uh, Verona beats Crotone 2-1, Fiorentina Cagliari 1-0. Uh, didn't see anything of those games. Juve against Sassuolo first. First of all, why did Juve play in dark blue? Uh, seemingly Sassuolo for... I mean, I don't know it, but I seemingly Sassuolo forgot to bring uh, proper kit or didn't uh, coordinate with Juve. I mean, Juve uh, played more or less in white. I think Sassuolo could play in green and black. It would have been just fine. Or Juve wants to sell a little bit more of those not bad looking jerseys, I have to have, have, have to say. So yeah, whatever, whatever it is, uh, whatever Juve showed that was well against Milan, did not really look that well uh, uh, against Sassuolo. Uh, a big moment was Orin uh, and Stobbesheim when Obiang was sent, sent off for a mistime challenge on Chiesa. Uh, VAR looked at an absolutely correct decision. Um, and then Juve actually had, even in stoppage time, uh, two or three good chances to get the goal. They finally get the goal uh, through Danilo with a great shot from outside of the, of, of the box who finds the back of the net. However, uh, you have to give Sassuolo credit with their never say die and, you know, attack is the best defense ap approach and they get the equalizer. They even had a, a, a chance to maybe get the lead, but then uh, late on, I mean, it was Juve who had more and was the was largely the better, better team, but I, I, I absolutely adore how Sassuolo is playing. Uh, but also, leaky defense, I mean, a ball is passed uh, in from Frabotto, the Sassuolo defender kind of let, let this pass almost through his leg where he could have blocked it, finds Ramsey gets the 2-1 uh, and then Ronaldo laid on, finally gets his goal after he had missed a big chance just before. And then yesterday uh, Spezia won against Sampdoria uh, through Zola penalty in the second half. It was 1-1 one, one at the half uh, with Terzi and Cantareva may have, have, having the other two goals that those were in two short, short succession. I think Spezia uh, overall deserved it and they look actually quite uh, good at the moment because if we look at the standings, uh, first Spezia moving already up to 14th. So uh, despite having a decent chance of getting relegated as uh, according to my model it's still uh, quite an achievement for them on top not much has changed except that milan's lead is now again at three points um i look at it more as a two-point lead because if inter would draw level uh, they have the better goal dif dif difference there roma stay put uh, put and juve stay put but those uh, four are kind of the the ones that are looking uh, to be in the top four at the moment. Atalanta make, uh, mo moving up uh, over Sassuolo and uh, Napoli also hanging in there. And if you look, I mean, on the bottom, there have been lots of changes. Uh, as I said, the big one is that Genoa moves out and Torino and Parma go in. And I'm really afraid that I will lose Parma for next season. Uh, does not look good. Uh, Frankly, uh, let's also adjust the table and see the current um, and see the current performance uh, values. Um, if you just Juve, of course, with the game in hand, moves up as um, as does Udine a little bit on the, on the bottom of the table. We'll get the Atalanta Udine matchup, I think, rather soon as far as I know, but not this week yet, just yet. Uh, nah. But after the next round, we get the Atalanta Udine matchup. Um, we also see uh, current performances Verona, uh, Milan, and Sassuolo are the positive surprises uh, as of, uh, so, so far with uh, Torino and Crotone having the negative bars out there. You see the expected points. I already did it for the Eredivisie and Serie uh, uh, and the Bundesliga. Let's do it also, Serie A. Let's show you the expected sta standings uh, of Serie A. Little bit of explanation here. We have now the average points are the blue bars. This is uh, how this table is ranked. You see that Inter is just a point ahead of Milan, who are a point ahead of Juve, a point ahead of Atalanta. Those four are at the moment the teams that uh, are considered by the model and the rating that I take from 538. Um, 
the teams that on average will finish in the top four. Uh, you see before that, and I changed it from the previous one, uh, also uh, since the answer to so the, the simulations, I get like a range of points. I mean, I get 10,000 times uh, the points finishes. And then I give you the fifth percentile, meaning uh, in 5% of the cases, the teams earn less Let's say get they into then 68 points, 50 percent less than 78 points, and 95 percent less than 86 points. So, this gives you kind of a prediction range where will Inter's point range at the end fall between 68 and 86 points at the moment. Milan are very, very, very similar, they're just a little bit below uh, in the middle part. It is really, really tight. I mean, 77, 77 is rounded. I think it's less than 0.4 uh, point, uh, points on average. At, at, at this stage. You also have the darker blue graphs should give you an idea how the rating is. Juve and Atalanta are the top rated teams. That that rating I also have to say is not necessarily on, only on results, it also takes player value uh, and, all the, uh, and all those kind of um, uh, factors into account. I actually find the rating, uh, some, some, some that dis disagree with it, for instance Atalanta, I would maybe not rate as high, um, but they also measure kind of team cohesion and stuff like that. Um, that would work in favor of art, 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 but overall this rating does give a good uh, assessment. I said you cannot always agree with everything. But the one thing that I like most about this uh, table is the green stuff on the right where you kind of see uh, these are the, uh, the distribution of the posi final positions in the table um, with uh, first place being all the way to the left, last place all the way to, to the right. So we see for Inter uh, the plausible range is between uh, four, uh, 1 and 6 with a uh, definite weight, the, the, the darker the, the green the more likely uh, position is being on the first, second and third place. Similar for Milan, it moves a little bit out, but you can definitely say that uh, if, if you just look at the shading, that Inter, Milan, Juve and Atalanta at, at, at the moment are definitely more in the top four and Roma and Napoli are more for the uh, Europa League and Europa Conference League spots. Um, however, it's very, very tight. I mean, those six teams are in this box for the Euro European spots. Lazio is also on to finish outside there as is Sasa so and there's a huge uh, midfield that doesn't go anywhere until Bologna where I, I would say those teams are not really threatened to be relegated but then starting with Spezia, Torino, Genoa here we get into re the relegation zone so you can really nicely see what it can be expected from these teams and we'll see of course that Crotone and Parma are in serious trouble so uh, you will get this table now uh, every round to kind of see how things change and those ranges will of course get tighter over time. For next week we first have a Coppa Italia uh, round with already today uh, if you watch on Tuesday Milan and Torino playing uh, we also have Fiorentina and Inter those two will actually meet up in the next round which I'm not very happy. Um, Napoli Empoli, Juve against Genoa, Sassuolo Spa, Juve Genoa also I think will play uh, each other in the uh, Juve and Sassuolo will play each other in the, in the next round. The winner will play against Milan Inter. So yeah, <laughs> so a uh, very great draw. It's all set up for Napoli, Roma, and Lazio to lift the trophy. I would say, well, Atalanta. Who, who knows? I don't know that exact draw there. But I think all of the big boys have rather manageable draws. Maybe Fiorentina Inter is the big one there. And then we have a weekend round with two absolute scorchers. We have already on Friday the Derby della Capitale, huge matchup. Then Napoli Fiorentina, not an in interesting one, but then on Sunday in the evening, Inter Juve. I mean, mark your calendars, those are the two games that, that you want to watch. And despite having NFL playoffs as well, I will watch those two games. A million plays on Monday against Cagliari. So, yeah. That was it from Serie A for this weekend. Kind of a longish video, but I wanted to actually spend the time to explain this new graph as well. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, wish you a wonderful day. Bye.